Hello folks and welcome to another episode of You Are The Ref, You Make The Call with me and from the Referee Forum, let's get straight into it. Now first things first, nobody got the right answer of what this stadium was last week. It was the Amex Stadium home of Brighton and Hove Albion who play of course in the English Premier Division. If they ever start that up again, maybe they will, maybe they won't. Who knows where we are with professional football. Um, but because no one got that right, uh, no one wins a prize. So same question again, who plays in this stadium? That's gonna be there for most of the video behind me. Uh, if you get it right, you win yourself a prize. Okay, as always, we've got four clips to show. Uh, starting off with this one. If this has never happened to you, you have not been refereeing long enough. It's, uh, uh, it sucks when it happens. Let's have a look. Now, whenever I've been out in a team of three match officials, I've always gone by this rule. If you get hit by the ball during the 90 minutes, you buy the other two a drink at the end of the game. Most refs buy them a drink anyway. That's cool, good refs, good refs do that. Um, but if you're one of the assistants uh, and it happens to you, you're getting them in. You are getting the drinks in at the end of the 90. Now I think the attacker picking up a yellow card on this one's a little bit harsh from the referee. Um, he's barely inconvenienced the goalkeeper and I think he's just booking the attacker because he's sending the goalkeeper off. The goalkeeper, absolutely, it's a red card all day long. <laughs> The yellow for the attacker, I'm like that, I'm like that. You don't know what the, the play has been like for the entire game, of course. Uh, it is obviously a second yellow for that attacking player, so he must have done something earlier on in the game to kind of wind the referee up, or he's, he's just he's on the referee's radar for doing something. So obviously there's history there that we watching the clip just don't know about. But what do you think? Harsh yellow, maybe in isolation if that was his first go, then yeah, a harsh yellow. But we don't know what's happened beforehand. The red, absolutely nailed on. Here's the next clip, is the classic what not to do in a mass confrontation if you are the referee. Let's have a look. So we'll watch it again over the slow motion. The referee gets himself in and amongst the two players that are fighting. And as you can see, he's now completely surrounded on all sides. If something else is kicking off around you, you've got no idea what's going on and you could get hurt. So be careful, don't get in there. I'd, I'd step right the way back and allow the fight to just carry on. As you can see, parents, uh, other spectators, whoever's there will break up the fight. You don't have to do that. That's not your job. Get out of the way and you deal with the aftermath. The final clip is one that is pretty much well known throughout uh, the internet. Fair to say, you've probably seen this one before, but what's the right thing to do in this situation? Let's watch the clip and discuss it at the end.
So an outside agent has interfered with the ball during uh, open play. Of course, the referee stops the game, deals with it in this, the sense that someone will come in and remove him. In this case, he is just gone. He forest gumped his way out that stadium. He is not coming back. Not alive anyway. <laughs> so you, you, you calm the whole situation down and then it's a drop ball. But in this instance, right, that outside interference has definitely stopped a goal. The attackers say, just drop the ball, ref. I want to I want to kick that ball in the net. I want I want that goal. The defenders say, nah, we're gonna defend that. This is like a second, uh, a second chance for us to get the defending right. As the referee, what do you do in that situation? It's a really tough call. The spirit of the laws would say, come on, defenders step out the way, allow the atta attackers to have that goal. Just allow it, allow it fam. As a referee, you can't enforce the spirit of the laws, you can only enforce the letter of the laws. So, if you get that scenario to restart, what are you doing? I would personally try and convince the defending team to say, look, that was a certain goal. I'm going to drop the ball to the attackers, let them score. But you, you can't, how would you say it? How would you say it? It blows my mind to think that that would be something that you'd have to say, especially for an unsporting a team. A, a, a team of defenders so unsporting that they'd be like, uh, we, we want to try and defend this. I'd be like, what? What? So there we go, folks. They are our clips for today. Thank you very much for those of you that watch these videos. It does mean a lot to me. Obviously, I spend a lot of time making these videos and running the referee forum as well. It's all for you. Um, so thanks very much for everyone that gets involved. If you're not yet following the referee forum, head over to facebook.com forward slash the referee forum and there's also a referee forum group there as well if you want to share your videos or news stories or anything like that you can drop it there and it might end up in this video like these comments off the recent Mark Halsey article where he said that the elite German referees might struggle to concentrate in the Bundesliga because there's no fans in the stadium Mark what are you chatting about mate what are you chatting about Did you know that you can subscribe to the channel by clicking this thing up here? Or you can watch a playlist of other referee videos by clicking this box up here. So subscribe here, or watch more referee videos here. Subscribe, more time to enjoy the refereeing stuff.